Hey guys, we're coming at you with another Precision T7810 hardware upgrade video. Um, basically, we were having some issues with our temperatures on our processors, uh, staying around 75 to 80 degrees using CPU intensive programs. Uh, so we're going to show you how to install two aftermarket Noctua heat sinks uh, to keep those temperatures in check. There are a couple disclaimers that we want to make you aware of before you possibly emulate this install. Uh, number one is you will have to remove your optical drive cage as well as your memory shrouds. Um, second, the aftermarket fans that are provided with the Noctua heatsink will always be running. Uh, we think these trade-offs are more than worth it uh, for the lower temperatures that you will achieve um, after doing this install. Here's a quick look at the heat sinks that we'll be installing into our Precision T7810 workstation. We'll post the links to these products in the description. We'll start the installation process by removing the side panel. We'll then remove the optical drive cage. Next, we'll remove the bottom optical drive bracket and then cross diagonally loosen the four screws on the stock Dell heat sinks to remove them. We'll now remove the processors so that we can clean the old heat paste off of them. This isn't always necessary, but we are also going to clean the gold connection side of the processors with Q-tips and rubbing alcohol. We forgot to reinstall the bottom optical drive cage screw, so we'll pop that back in to hold the remaining metal bracket in place. We also have to remove the plastic memory shrouds to provide enough room to install the new heat sinks. Next, we are going to reinstall our cleaned processors. And after we install these processors, that'll pretty much complete our prep to installing the new Noctua heat sinks. Now we are ready to prep our Noctua heat sinks for the install. The heat sinks come out of the box with black springs that are too big to allow for the install in our T7810 workstation. So we are going to swap them out with four of the number 10 split washers. And we'll do this for each spring. You can also cut the springs down to size if you had the proper tools to do so. After swapping the first spring, we realized that you can make this process much easier by removing the fans from the heatsink. You'll also need to remove the fans to fasten the heatsink to the system board. Now we are ready to apply heat paste to the processors. Each Noctua heatsink included a syringe of heat paste. We are finally ready to attach the Noctua heat sinks to the system board. The best advice that we can provide is to get each screw thread to barely catch 
and then cross diagonally tighten the screws. In order to provide power to the Noctua fans, we need to use these 5 pin to 4 pin adapters. We'll then connect the adapters to the 4 pin split cables to provide power to both fans. The split cables are included with the Noctua heat sinks. Next, we will reinstall the cooling fans back onto the heat sinks. We'll make sure to install the fans with the Noctua logos facing the back of the chassis to maintain the front to back cooling of the stock chassis fans in the T7810 workstation. That concludes the install of our new Noctua heat sinks. Now we just need to put the side panel back on, get the system plugged back in, and run through some benchmarks to see if the temperature is improved. This is a benchmark tool called Cinebench. With the stock heat sinks, we were seeing temperatures in the mid 70s to low 80s. The Noctua heat sinks did a much better job of cooling the processors. The second CPU was only able to hit 70 degrees for a small portion of the test. We'll switch between processor one and processor two to show you the different temps throughout the benchmark. If this video was helpful to you, please consider subscribing to the channel and thank you so much for watching.